Well, hey, this morning we're going to pray for a couple of things before we get started. And I want you to know, if you're not a follower of Jesus, this is going to kind of sound weird. Why? Because there's two kingdoms, right? So you think about all the nations of the world, but behind that there's two kingdoms, God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom. And you and I come into the world, we come into Satan's kingdom. You know, when you look at a baby, oh, so innocent, so precious. Uh Uh-uh. Little sinner. Little sinner. Babies selfish, right? That's why you never get any sleep. They cry when they don't get their way, right? Say, I know adults that do that. Well, yeah, that's that's another problem. But anyways, listen, when you and I come into the world, we're separated from God. We're already in rebellion towards God. And that's why we need the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says, when you believe in Jesus, you're transferred from the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of Satan, to the kingdom of Christ. So if you haven't been transferred, friends, you need to be transferred. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. But when you get transferred, our worldview changes. How we view the world, how we view morality, how we view ethics, the ones that we're trying to please. Actually, there's only one we're trying to please. That's God. And then everything else falls under some category underneath that. And so this morning, as I share a couple of thoughts just by way of introduction, then we're going to pray for two things. We're going to pray for Israel. We're going to pray for America. Israel is hated around the world today. And listen, anti-Semitism is not new. And I can tell you the, the, the push behind it. There's a spiritual push behind it because God made certain promises to bless all the nations of the earth through Israel. And um, God said in Genesis chapter 12, Abraham, in you and your descendants, all the nations will be blessed. It's Lord Jesus Christ, Galatians chapter 3, verse 6. And then and it says, and those that bless you, I will bless, and those that curse you, I will curse. Well, what does Satan do when God gives a blessing? He tries to eradicate it. He tries to oppose it. And so all through history, there has been a a backwash in the world to eradicate the Jewish people. 2% of the whole world is is, is Jewish, uh, ethnic Israel, but God has a plan for them. And so we want to pray for Israel. We recognize that when it's all said and done, God's going to bring about his promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why? Because God does not break his promises. Praise God for that, okay? So we're going to pray for Israel here in just a second. Second thing I want us to do, I want us to pray for America. Remember what Jesus said, a house divided cannot stand? And we've got lots of polarizing forces today to try and break people up, churches, homes, children from parents, husbands and wives. I mean, it's all about division and conquer. And listen, Satan is behind division, not God. God, God brings unity. The holiness brings unity. Sin always brings destruction. Jesus said you will know it by its fruit, Right? The fruit of division and hate and contempt is the exact opposite. And we see this all across America. And friends, this is so important. You and I are left here to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ, to live godly in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, and to pray for this country and other countries wherever God has established us. Man, like if we're living in Kenya or we're living in Mexico or we're living in Colombia or we're living, wherever we're living, we should be praying for that place. Because when we do that, things change. God works in the background through people like Daniel. God works in the background like how the gospel got into Caesar's household. We saw that in chapter 1 of Philippians. God does something in us. It says in, it says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, it says when we pray for kings and those who are in authority, it leads us to live a tranquil and quiet spirit. What does that mean? It means we don't lose hope. It means they're like, hey, God's got this under control. When they're rebelling against God, Hey, you can rebel against God, but know there's a God in heaven and every king shall bow, every lord, every president, every senator, every representative, every governor, including the California governor and and everybody in Congress. I'm I'm just telling you there's a settledness because we know ultimately Jesus wins, right? Satan doesn't win, Jesus wins. So we just think about this division. I just want to think with me just really quick. You know, growing up here in America and learn something about our history and our governance, we have a constitution, and it's two things. The the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution are rooted in a philosophy and an idea that's very unique in history. And it is this, that there is a God, and that we are created in God's image with certain inalienable rights that come from God, not from government. All right, so in the Bill of Rights, because we we have something from God that doesn't come from government, it's basically free thought in the sense of we have 
freedom of speech. Now listen, you, you should not speak until you think, right? You should think first before you speak. So when you have thought police, like in China or now all around us, or no longer freedom of religion or freedom of assembly, that's what made America great. Was we, there was something that's bigger than government and it's God. And so, so today we're seeing this, 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 this tension. And I want you just to see how blatant it is and how, like, shaking the fist at God. In fact, every day I feel farther and farther away, uh, more isolated in this world. I don't know if you're feeling that. I want to just show you a video clip. This, is, this, this happened in a school board meeting. Before you see it, you need to understand He's talking about the nuclear family. What's the nuclear family? A husband, wife, and children. Who created marriage? God. Not, not uh, government, not culture, but God. And he said, Adam, is not good for you to be alone. He creates Eve. He brings them together. They become one flesh. They become a family unit. And then it says he blesses them. Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Satan's trying to kill the children. Satan's trying to dissolve the nuclear family. And we see this everywhere in America. Now, this is, this is, this is, I mean, that wouldn't be true 50 years ago, okay? Because there was more of a Judeo-Christian worldview. And I want you to see how he talks about the nuclear family. And then as he goes on and pontificates one thing after another that is anti-God, I want you to see how the crowd reacts at the end. Because in the past, you would, you know, like somebody gets up and says something that's like, like foolish. You would just say, ah, he's a nut. But now when the nuts get up and talk, well, let me say it in a biblical way. A fool gets up and talks, and then everybody claps. That is an ideological shift. That's, that's, and these two worlds are, are not compatible. Okay? So, so let, me just, let me just show this to you. My name is Noah Schwartz. My pronouns are he, they. Um, you know, we got to set clear expectations for our future board members, you know. And first, I'd like to say you guys are doing a great job of dismantling systems of oppression. And there is no greater source of systematic oppression than the nuclear family. The nuclear family is associated with whiteness. And whiteness is associated with racism, bigotry, transphobia, and white supremacy. Just look at these QAnon Trump-supporting parents protesting at your meetings. Oh, I don't want my kid to get vaccinated. I don't want my kid to wear a mask. Why is my kindergartner taking puberty blockers? Why is there a urinal in the girls' room? Well. You're a domestic terrorist, and you need to be investigated by the FBI. Racism, bigotry, and hatred have no place in our schools, and quite frankly, I don't understand why you're still allowing parents to speak here. <laughs> and to all the parents who feel that they have the right to be involved in their kid's education, well, you're a white supremacist, and your children need to be taken away from you so that we can create a more tolerant and inclusive society. Furthermore, Cuties on Netflix should be required viewing for all elementary school students. The tradition of raising children is outdated and obsolete. And our children, they need to be groomed instead. Groomed to be tolerant, loving, anti-racist, and comfortable with their gender fluidity. Thank you for hearing me out on why we need to dismantle the patriarchy, dismantle oppression, dismantle whiteness, and most importantly, dismantle the nuclear family. The new world order that we are trying to create starts with our children. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Gordon Flowers. Did you hear the clapping at the end? That was so anti-biblical. I don't even know how to describe it other than utter foolishness. And what is crazy, see, in the past you would, you would say foolish people, people that don't acknowledge God because the fool has said in his heart there is no God. And the foolish people that say that there is no God who's holy and just and that God has given us a standard of morality, you wouldn't give them the mic. But today we silence people who have the wisdom of God. This just sums it up really good. We live in a time where wise people, who are wise people? They fear God. Remember what Proverbs says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, beginning of knowledge. So we live in a time when wise people are silenced so that foolish people, who are the foolish people that don't acknowledge God, don't acknowledge God's authority, that rebel against God, the foolish people won't be offended. Friends, there's someone who is being offended when fools speak, and it's God. And God judges nations. He judges people. In fact, Jesus says, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. He is the judge of the living and the dead. And wherever you're at, if you're out in the courtyard, you're online, remember this. 
It's God that we have to worry about offending, not necessarily the fools sitting around us or in the same room or at the same board meeting or at the same school or the same campus. I'm just telling you, fear God and follow Him, whatever may come. Would you pray with me right now? Father, we just humble ourselves in your presence. And God, we know that there's a war going on in the background. It's a, some people would just say it's ideological, but it's really theological. Uh, it's, it's, it's two kingdoms um, in contrast to each other, this kingdom of darkness, kingdom of Satan, and the kingdom of light, the kingdom of your beloved Son. And so, Father, I just pray right now for Israel. I pray that you would frustrate their enemies. I pray that you would show yourself strong on behalf of Israel. Give leaders wisdom. Give them unity there. God, we just are so thankful for the great revival among the millennials of Jewish people who are turning to Jesus Christ more than at any time in history. And we're seeing it in our day. We bless you for that. God, we pray for America and the division that's been created and is being fostered and is being cultivated. And God, we pray that we might be a preserving grace even uh, as we read through Genesis chapter 19. Help us to walk in integrity. Help us to walk in truth. Help us to walk um, with that, uh, that, that spirit of dignity, spiritual dignity, knowing that you are ultimately in control and you will hold everyone accountable for every thought, deed, and action. And God, we humble ourselves. Help us to be a godly and wise people for Jesus' sake at this time. We pray it in his name. Amen.